Hi guys, it's John from Android Alex, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Backbone controller for Android. So the Backbone itself has been around for quite a while, and you always hear about it from iPhone users saying it's the best controller available, or gamepad, for your phone. So now that it's finally come to Android, I thought I'd give it a go and see what it's like. So you know I've done plenty of gamepad comparisons on this channel before, so we'll get into the nitty gritty of this readably new controller. It's been out for a couple of months now, and we'll see exactly how it fares. So this actually retails at £100 or $100, so it's very expensive. So you're hoping for that sort of money, you're gonna get a great experience. So let's see what we get in the box and we'll see how the buttons work, see what features this has, and then we'll also put it through the test with a few different games. I've put affiliate links to this in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. And I've also put the time codes in there if you wanna to skip to any particular part of this video. So when you take the sleeve off, you're greeted by this sort of nice, fancy looking box here, and you've got the Backbone logo there. Now when you go inside, I must say it's a slightly more underwhelming experience for me. You get this very cheap looking uh, Get The App card in here on top of the controller itself. And this is just, yeah, it obviously shows you how to put in the phone. But yeah, that was a slight, uh, detraction from the overall experience. Underneath here you get the sort of safety guide here, which again, the sort of look and feel of this guide is uh, very cheap looking and not what you'd expect from a premium device. But anyway, we can get rid of that and put that to the side because that's not required and we're left with the controller itself. Okay, so here is the backbone out of the box and as you can see, it's a nice compact design, I must admit. It does feel very nice in the hands. It does feel like a good plastic here. It doesn't feel cheap and tacky like you'd see on some cheaper uh, game pads. And you can see here it has this design which it extends out and there is your backbone to your controller. It automatically closes back up so you basically slot your phone in and away you go. So the overall look and feel of the device is really nice. Like I say, it looks nice and it does look and feel premium in the hand. So we're gonna go over the functions and features of this one by one, and we'll see whether this may be the right controller for you. So we'll just start off with the connectivity here. So we get a USB-C connector here for a direct input to your phone. So this doesn't move up or down at all. This is a completely fixed USB-C connector here. So just bear that in mind when putting your phone in. On the bottom of the device, on the right-hand side, we have a USB-C port here. This is for charging only. So it's a pass-through charger and not all phones are supported, but majority of them are, so you should be okay. On the left-hand side, we get this lovely three and a half mil headphone jack here, so you can use your headphones whilst playing your game with lag-free audio. So that's really nice to see this, and I haven't seen that on any other controllers that I've reviewed so far. So on the front of the backbone itself, we see we have the left analog stick, the D-pad, we have a menu and a screenshot or record button here. And on the right-hand side, we have the face buttons, the right analog stick, we have the start button, and here we have the backbone app button. So we'll get over that when we get the phone in a bit later on. So this is nice and light, it's about 138 grams, so about 4.87 ounces or so, so it's not really gonna be a big weight in your pocket. Now this doesn't fold or anything, this is a rigid body, and you can see here, you can flex it very slightly without, obviously, it's slightly more flexible, but when your phone's in here, you're not gonna be flexing it around too much anyway. Now we can see here, we do have some sort of rubber pads here. This is to protect your phone when you slot it in to the backbone. So we do have one either side. So that's just to prevent any scratching against plastic or plastic against glass. So that's a nice feature to have in there. On the top of the controller, we do have an R1 and R2 button. And on the left, we do have L1 and L2. Now, initially, when I got this out of the box, the amount of travel in these analog sticks was quite worrying to me. You can see here, they don't really travel a huge amount in either direction. Now, we can compare that to an Xbox controller, which I have here. So you can see here, when you move your analog stick, you get plenty of movement all the way around here, as you have sort of come accustomed to over the years. And with the backbone here, you do get a very little amount of movement. So you can see here, just a tiny bit up and down, left and right. So initially I was a bit worried about how this would play in games. It's exactly the same on the right hand stick as well, just a very small amount of movement in any direction. Now the D-pad as well, it is one of these which if you have a listen, 
It's definitely not the worst feeling D-pad I've ever used, but it isn't as clicky and nice as an official Xbox controller. If we have a listen to here in comparison. So you can see here in comparison, it doesn't have as nice a feedback as the Xbox controller. I will continue comparing it to the Xbox controller because I think this is the sort of gold standard in controllers. It's almost perfect, I'd say. So yeah, the D-pad being a bit, not spongy, but just not as good feedback as you may want for some of those games where you're sort of rolling your thumb around it or, you know, just the feedback just is not as good. It's as simple as that. Now the face buttons here, if we have a quick listen, you can hear the switches under them. And again, if we compare that to the Xbox controller here, you don't get as much travel or as much feedback from them, but I must admit, that uh, in use they are actually quite good. So I wouldn't worry about the fact that they don't uh, travel as much as the Xbox controller. Obviously there's different switches underneath, but uh, they do actually work quite nicely in game. Obviously we have our click in for the thumbsticks as well, and they're absolutely fine. No problem at all with those whatsoever. So if we move on to the top of the controller now, and we can see here the bumper buttons here. Now these don't feel particularly nice in my opinion. They're not as uh, clicky. They have quite a bit of travel to them, but they don't feel like they're clicking in very well. It is just one button under there. And again, if we compare this to the Xbox controller, this, these bump buttons almost feel a tiny bit uh, cheap in comparison to the face buttons, for example. It's just not as good sort of feeling to them as you would want, in my personal opinion. Now, let's go over the analog triggers here. So we can see here, although they are definitely analog, the amount of travel on them is quite small. So if you compare that to an Xbox controller, or even if we compare that to our good old classic GLAP controller here, we can see here the amount of travel is a lot less here on the backbone. So obviously you're not gonna get a huge amount of control here, although it's still nice to have analog triggers on a controller. It's not gonna be as much as you would get from some other controllers that are out there. We compare it to, for example, the game server here without analog triggers at all. And obviously it's a world of difference better on the backbone. Now the buttons on the bottom left here do feel a tiny bit spongy, especially this one over here. But these are things that you're not gonna be using much anyway. And I think they're kind of not quite recessed into the controller, but they are very barely sticking out here. So you don't accidentally press them whilst you're doing something else. And again, you don't really use these much anyway. So I'm not too worried about those. We get to the backbone button here, which does actually have a ring of light around it when it's powered up. And we get the start button here, which again, you're not gonna use a huge amount. So I'm not too worried about the feeling of those, but yeah, they're, they're a tiny bit spongy. I'd say in comparison to the other buttons on the controller. So with that being said, let's get the phone in and we'll see how it all looks and we'll see exactly how it controls. Okay, so the first step in getting your phone inserted here is to take off the case. You cannot get a phone with case on into this gamepad and I can quickly show you why, because when your phone case is on and in, we can see here that the USB-C connection just is not going to be long enough to actually get into your phone. So it's a bit of a shame because it does just about fit in with my S23 Ultra case here. But uh, yeah, you do have to take your case off to use this controller. So that being said, what we're gonna do is just slide our phone in from the left here. And this is slightly awkward. Now don't forget that the USB-C port itself does not move up or down. So you've got to make sure it's lined up and completely straight before you press it together. But yeah, once it's in, it does feel really nice. And it's, I don't know, the feeling of this compared to some of the other controllers I've used is really nice. And uh, it does make you feel almost like you're sort of holding a switch or a sort of Steam Deck type thing. It doesn't even feel like you're holding an Android phone anymore, especially when you're in the Backbone app itself. 
Okay, so here we are in the Backbone app, and this is a free app available from the Play Store. And this does surprisingly make the whole experience a lot nicer. It just gives it a much nicer feeling. And if you're an Xbox user, you're gonna be really familiar with this sort of layout here with these tiles. And uh, yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with how a gamepad app can make your phone feel like a gaming console. It's a bit hard to describe, but you basically set up an account. You can have friends, you can invite people to games, and you can join chats and things. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing, like I say, how this feels. The other good thing about this app is that it does allow you to find new games that you wouldn't necessarily have looked for before, ones that obviously support controllers. And it doesn't matter if it's on the cloud or if it's in the Google Play Store, it will bring it up here. So I've got Xbox Game Pass here, so I can play any of these games here on my phone. And of course, you can also remote play with this controller, and we'll go through that a bit later on. So what I want to just quickly do first is go through the gamepad tester here and we can see here how well this uh, input delay is or the lack of input delay for this controller and just test that all the buttons work as expected, which they obviously do indeed. Start and select here. So we're happy that everything's working as it should do. And again, like I said, even though the travel on these seems quite small in comparison, to the Xbox controller, they do actually work really well and I was pleasantly surprised at how good they actually are. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put on the screen recording here and you can see as I very slightly press this, you can see the uh, analog stick going up to a maximum of 1.0, which is fully depressed here. And you can see you can get slight variations between, but you do have to be very, very gentle on this due to the amount of travel that you have here. So it's the same on the left hand one as well. If we have a look here. So yeah, just bear that in mind. You, although these are analog, you don't get a huge amount of control with them. So now we can check the dead zones and how they can draw a nice little circle here. And you can see here, it's very nice indeed. The dead zones, I can't find any particularly. It's all very nice. And same on the right hand stick as well. It looks really nice and you can get a nice solid circle here without any problems. So yeah, I haven't found any dead spots here. They seem to be performing as you would expect for a 100 pound controller. Okay, so let's go back into the Backbone app here. So if we find a game that is actually uh, on both the Play Store and on the Xbox Live streaming service, we can see here there's two ways to play. So we can click on here and you can choose which one you want to use. We're gonna do Xbox Cloud Gaming and we'll get this loaded up and we'll see how it performs. Now don't forget this does need a very good Wi-Fi connection and internet speed as well. So make sure you are on a decent connection before trying any cloud streaming services, obviously. So as you can see, this is working absolutely fine, absolutely no problems whatsoever with either analog or D-pad for this sort of game. You're gonna be using a D-pad more than likely, if you're old school like me at least. So yeah, absolutely no problems at all with cloud gaming services. So again, it's so easy just to quickly go back into the Backbone app here and jump into something else. And this is why it makes it feel more like a sort of console because you're not going back to Android, you know, and going through your apps, trying to find what you want to play. You can just do it straight from here. Now you can jump straight into the Game Pass app here as well, if you wish to, and then you have a better selection potentially of what you want to do. And again, this can all be controlled with your controller. So it's really nice if we just go into cloud here. Again, we could select another game to play via the cloud. Now the sound coming from the device is now obviously pointing mostly down here into the side of the controller. So it does get slightly more muffled than it would do if you were holding it with your hands potentially, but it does still come out without any problems as far as you can still hear everything fine. But obviously there will be this slight difference for the fact that it is now covered up slightly by the side of the controller. So 
So again, once you've finished playing a game, you can just simply click on the Backbone button, and depending on what app you're in, it will either minimize or just come straight back to your Backbone here. This does also allow you to capture uh, your screen recording. To do a capture, you just simply press the screenshot button here and it'll start recording the screen. And to stop, you just press it again and you can see it stops recording. To do a screenshot, you can press and hold and that will screenshot the screen. So that's really nice. So let's get into an Android game now and we'll just see exactly how it looks. So Call of Duty, it does detect it as a backbone. And then from there on, you can get into a game once you've gotten through your usual clicks on the menu. And we'll get into a quick game and see how it looks. We'll test out, we'll add a few bots in here and we'll see if we can see how precise the uh, controller is here. So you can see if you're a sniper, you can get some nice uh, results here. And uh, yeah, overall, just it just works with the games. So any controller supported game that works with the standard X input should be absolutely fine. You shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. So if I now want to record this, I can just tap on the capture button and that will start capturing my recording here of how good I'm playing. And then once you're happy, you press again to stop recording. Okay, so a few more things in the settings here. If you go to play on any screen, you can then select your desired uh, device. So if you wanna play on the PC, you can plug it into the PC and get it running on there. If you've got a Mac or an iPad or on a Chromecast, you can select whichever screen you want to play on and the controller will then work with that device. So that's really nice to see that they give you the option to actually uh, do that. From here, you can also obviously update your firmware if there are any updates available. There aren't any currently at the time of recording this video. Okay, so we're just trying out a bit of remote play here on the Xbox, and you can see here it's working absolutely fine. So we can get into a game and start playing. So let's just load one up and see how it looks. Okay, so I've just plugged my headset in here and we can see it's gonna ask if you want the backbone to handle this. We're gonna press okay. And we're just gonna try going back into our Game Pass game here. Okay, and the sound coming out is absolutely fine. I can hear everything nice and clear. So there's no sort of crackling or anything on here. It sounds like a decent connection. So yeah, that's a really nice feature to have on an Android controller. Right, okay, so that was my quick look and review of the Backbone. And um, to be honest, I'm really impressed with the controller. It is, however, very expensive, so you've just gotta bear that in mind and just make sure that uh, you do play enough games to warrant this sort of money. You can see here, there's no issues at all with it hitting any camera lenses on my S23 Ultra here. And we can see on the other side also that there's plenty of space here that we're not going to damage the phone whatsoever. So it's really well made. It feels really nice in the hand. And aside from the fact you do have to take your case off, this is probably one of my new favorite game controllers. I think the thing that sets it apart is definitely this, uh, apart from the look and feel of it, is the fact that this app is really nice. And it does feel like, like I said, you've got uh, your own game console here. I mean, you've got over 700 games that you can go through and select from here. And it's just really nice, um, a nice user experience, which is kind of the whole sort of Apple thing, isn't it? User experience is key. And with the backbone, that's definitely what you get. Even the little 
you know, features such as the background of the game showing up behind it on all the games that you see here. It's really, really well made and uh, yeah, really impressed overall. So yeah, that's the only slight negative I'd say is this USB port. They could have made it very similar to the GameSir X2 or X3 with its uh, USB-C port, which can move up and down, which makes getting a phone in just that little bit easier because you can sort of do it like this and then just open the controller out. So yeah, pros and cons, but uh, overall I definitely love the feeling of this backbone and uh, yeah, I've been really impressed with it over the last couple of days I've been using it. So I hope this video was useful. If you've got any questions or comments, do leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them where I can. If there's any other controllers you want me to look at or check out, then do leave that in the comments below and I'll do my best if they're available in the UK, I can get them in and have a look at them for you. So again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.